What's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. So this one's all about the recently announced Google Pixel 4a. Now this phone is Google's budget offering that's the successor to the pretty popular Google Pixel 3a. And the crazy part about this phone is you can buy it for $349. Now I personally love reviewing budget phones because phones like this make a smartphone manufacturer really focus on what they do well and everything else about the phone is built around those core values in the simplest and most cost-effective way possible. So in the case of the Pixel 4a, it's got that fluid Google software, it's got nice enhancements added to it thanks to the Google Assistant, and of course, it comes with the Pixel camera, which we all know is excellent. Now before we get into those details, I wanna spend some time talking about the simple and cost-effective measures that Google took when building the Pixel 4a. And those choices will be noticed as soon as you look at the phone and pick it up for the first time. The enclosure and the back of the device are one solid piece of plastic, and the plastic itself feels really smooth and comes in a nice matte finish. Now Google also brought back the rear-mounted fingerprint sensor, which is just as fast and accurate as you and I both remember it to be. They also brought back the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is huge for people who still rely on high quality wired headphones. And as far as the buttons on the device go, the power and the volume rocker buttons are super tactile. I mean, listen to this. I'm pretty sure this phone has better buttons than what you would find on even the Pixel 4. And of course, that power button is accented in this really nice like seafoam green-ish, turquoise-ish color. Now, keep in mind that this is a budget build, so you will be missing out on some things that you may find in a more premium build, like an IP rating, wireless charging, and in the case of some more premium Pixel devices, squeezing the sides to activate the Google Assistant. Although, I don't know how many people would really miss that feature. Now flip things over to the front of the phone and you'll find a 5.8 inch 1080p OLED display with a maximum refresh rate of 60 hertz. Now this display also features a hole punch cutout for the selfie camera. And thanks to that hole punch cutout, the bezels on the top and the bottom of the phone are relatively small. Now on the top bezel, you'll find your earpiece that actually doubles as a speaker to play in tandem with the bottom firing speaker on the phone. And just going back to the display quality for a second, for a phone that costs 349 bucks, the display is actually pretty good. I mean, honestly, at this price point, I was expecting the display to potentially be a little worse, but it is OLED, so you get rich colors and you get vibrant and accurate colors as well. And in outdoor visibility or in outdoor sunlight, the display still gets plenty bright. So all in all, when you consider what you're getting at this price point, I would say the display quality is pretty nice. I feel like with budget phones, people naturally have a concern about performance. Now, the Pixel 4a comes with Qualcomm's Snapdragon 730G processor with six gigabytes of RAM. And honestly, performance on the phone is, I would say, decent, thanks to what I consider well-optimized Android, and the processor itself is not that bad. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this phone has flagship-level performance, but then again, I don't think any of us expected it to have flagship level performance. And for doing things like the basics, browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, making and receiving phone calls, sending text messages, and even in my case, playing some mobile games, I had absolutely no issue with the performance on this phone. Now, while the phone may not be a performance champion, one benefit of the 730G processor is its impact on battery life. The Pixel 4a only comes with a 3,140 milliamp hour battery. And I say only because by today's smartphone standards, that is a small battery. But whenever you think about the fact that it has a 1080p 60 hertz panel with a budget friendly processor, the battery life on the phone is actually really solid. I've been consistently getting over five hours of screen on time almost every single day. And that includes doing things like watching streams on Twitch, watching YouTube videos, playing two or three different mobile games throughout the day, reading news articles, browsing the web. I mean, general day-to-day -day usage with this phone is really solid in terms of battery life. There are days where I'm taking the phone off charge at maybe 7.30 in the morning whenever I wake up, maybe eight o'clock, and the phone is comfortably lasting through the late hours of the night, 10 or 11 o'clock at night, while still having about 30% battery left. Considering the size and the battery capacity of this phone, that's pretty impressive. 
Now, every time I pick up my Pixel 4 XL, or in this case, while I was going through the review process for the Pixel 4a, when I use the phone, the software reminds me of why I enjoy this line of smartphones so much. In my opinion, there's nothing like Google's version of Android. Now, I happen to love Oxygen OS, which you find on OnePlus phones as well, but Google's take on Android, in my opinion, is one of the cleanest and uncluttered experiences that you can find. And obviously, the Google Assistant on Pixel phones is fantastic. I still miss features like call screening, live transcription, and even now playing, which identifies background music. You wouldn't think that a small software feature like that would make a difference, but it's so nice to have it whenever you're using one of these phones or testing one of these phones. And obviously, since Google basically makes Android, phones like the Pixel 4a are guaranteed to get software updates for at least three years. Now, how the phone lasts over the course of three years is still to be seen, but you gotta love Google software. I mean, it's, it's one of the best, if not the best versions of Android that you could possibly use. Now, if you're interested in a phone like the Pixel 4a, chances are you're interested in the camera more so than almost any other aspect of the phone. And if you notice, whenever you look at the camera housing, Google reused the same design language from the Pixel 4, but the 4a does not feature two lenses. It features one lens, and the other spot on the camera housing is reserved for the flash unit. Now that one lens is 12.2 megapixels with f1.7 aperture, and Google has never been about throwing like a 108 megapixel lens into the camera or trying to create these like three or four lens camera setups. They take one lens, and instead they focus on image processing and computational photography to produce awesome photos. I was really happy with the results of photos taken on the Pixel 4a, and honestly, whenever you think about a phone that's $349 that can produce still photos like this, it can literally go head to head with flagship phones that I'm not kidding, can cost $800 to $1,000 more than this smartphone. Now it is a Pixel, so obviously it's not going to be best in class whenever it comes to video, but if you're looking for still mobile phone photography on a budget, the Pixel 4a is, is your go-to for sure. So that's about it. That's the Google Pixel 4a. It actually gives you a really solid amount of smartphone for $349. And that's coming from someone like myself who always likes to walk around with the latest and greatest biggest iPhone, like the 11 Pro Max, or the latest and greatest biggest OnePlus device, like the OnePlus 8 Pro. I honestly didn't know how I would feel during my testing and review period of this phone, but when I took a step back from phones like the OnePlus and the 11 Pro Max, it actually felt really refreshing to use a phone like this that is compact, fits in the hand really well, still has pretty solid build quality, and just gets the basics done while still having excellent software and excellent camera performance. If you are honestly considering buying the Pixel 4a, it's definitely worth every penny in my opinion. Now, if you are considering buying the 4a, like I said, has a starting price of $349. And actually, it's not even a starting price. That's just the price because Google makes buying the phone super simple. It's available in one color, just black, one storage option, 128 gigabytes, and one size, 5.8 inches. And I believe orders will start shipping on the 20th. So pre-orders are live now. But like I said, excellent phone. And I actually wanna ask you guys, would you be interested in seeing a comparison between the Pixel 4a and the 2020 iPhone SE? Because we're leaning towards making one and uh, we think it would be a pretty great video. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and let us know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, please stay safe and thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. That's the Google Pixel 4a. It actually gives you a lot of smartphone for 349 bucks. And that's coming from someone like myself who likes to, did you move the camera? You did move the camera, didn't you?